Good morning. Today is Tuesday. It is the 16th day of Shvat. And we continue, we're finishing today, chapter 21 in Tanya. Talking about God concealing himself. He's playing hide and seek with us. And the concealment that God conceals from us is for our benefit so that we can exist because everything that exists, if, if it would fill its source, it wouldn't have its own identity. Nothing could exist. The intense light of Hashem is so intense that it will be nullified within the light and Hashem therefore puts the concealment. But he makes the concealment to the point that we feel ourselves as independently existing. This is the comparison what we said that uh, Hashem created the world, the world with speech. And just like speech, when you speak, the word, the spoken word takes on its own identity and it becomes a separate entity. But this is only from our perspective. In speech, it, it is indeed so that the word receives its own identity, becomes a separate entity. But in Hashem, by God, since everything is Hashem, God is everywhere. So nothing can be separated from Hashem. So even though God did create the whole entire world and everything is created by Hashem, nevertheless, it is all as if it doesn't exist. Because in Hashem's existence, it is nullified, just like the word, the spoken word, before it became a spoken word. When it's still in the power of speech, it is nullified. Same thing as the world is nullified within Hashem because Hashem is everywhere. So this concept of the God's contractions and how it doesn't affect Hashem, this is what he's going to explain in today's shir about when we're saying that there is a contraction and concealment, the concealment is only from us. But by Hashem, in, in, from him it's not concealed. Just to use an example, when you look at, uh, when you look at the sun and the moon, if you wouldn't know that the, where the light of the moon comes from, if you, let's say, you wouldn't see the sun, you wouldn't know, if you wouldn't know that it is a sun, you would see a, a moon, a moon shines. And you don't see the source. But when you know the source, you see the sun, and you know that the source is the sun. And yet, the light of the moon seems like a separate light. But obviously it's not. And this is only one type of concealment or contraction. When you have the light that comes from the sun <clears throat> to create the light of the moon, to be, to reflect into the moon, and we received the light from the moon, we went one step of concealment. Now imagine this continues to be concealed. After, let's say, the sun of the, the light of the moon goes and is further filtered into something else, you certainly wouldn't feel, you wouldn't know where, where the source is. You wouldn't feel the source. So, yet the concealment is only from the perspective of the recipient. But the perspective from the from Hashem, there is no concealment. So let's look inside. We'll explain a little more as we go along. Says the Alter. 
וכל הצמצומים הם בחינת אסתר פונים, all the contractions constitute the veiling of the divine countenance. It's concealing the Shem's countenance. להסתיר ולהעלים האויר והחיוס הנמשך מדיבור או יזבורת. That is, they veil and conceal the face, meaning the essential aspect of the light, the life force. Uh, derived from God's word, as we said before, the word of uh, <coughs> the, the heaven and the earth, everything is created from God's word. And this is concealed. So it's concealed so that it, it should not reveal itself with an intense radiance which the lower world would be incapable of receiving. If it's going to be intense, it's going to be impossible to receive. And therefore too, because it is thus obscured through tzimtzum, the light and life force of God's word that is clothed in them, appears to them as if it is something separated from God himself. We don't see the source. It is, it is felt as though it is only issued from him, just as speech of a human being issues from him, but then becomes separated from him. But by Hashem, it doesn't become separated. אך לגבי הקדוש ברוך הוא, אין שום צמצום והסתר ואלה מסטר ומיילים לפנום, וככה שייך את קוירה. But yet in regard to Hashem, in regard to God, no concealment or veil hides or obscures anything from him. Because to him, darkness, concealment, and light, revelation are alike. Darkness and, and, and light are the same by Hashem. As it brings the verse, it says, As it is written, even the darkness does not obscure anything from you. What does it mean? The darkness doesn't obscure anything from you. That's a simple reading of it. There's a deeper reading of understanding this verse. That darkness doesn't obscure. Why? Because it's from you. Because the darkness is God Himself. So the darkness cannot conceal God. God cannot does not conceal God. Everything is Hashem. That's what Al Terebe says. Mishum she'ein atzimtzumim va'levushim davo nifrad imenu is borich has v'shalom. Because the tzimtzumim, the contractions and the veils are not things distinct from him, never for family. It is just like the turtle, the kamtso, there's different interpretations for the kamtso means a, tur- a turtle or a snail. Some say it's a, a kind of grasshopper that has also a shell and the shell, it changes its shell, and the shell is from itself. So we cannot, so the garment does not conceal on this creature, whatever creature it is. So whose garment, its shell, is part of its body. So too, the very shell that the process of tzimtzum that hides godliness is itself godly. You know, they said there's a halacha regarding covering your head. That you have to supposed to cover your head, especially when you say a bracha, you have to cover your head. Many times I see people when they come and say a bracha, they put their hands on their head. But the halacha says that this is not good. It's not okay. Your own hand cannot be a barrier, cannot be a concealment, cannot be a separation from yourself. The idea of covering is to put something on top of you, something else, 
to show that there is something above you, that is God above you. So you put an, another thing up, above your head. But if you put your own hand above your head, the hand is yourself. So you don't conceal yourself. You don't separate yourself with yourself. So Hashem, God, is not, conce is not concealed with these contractions. All of this is only from us. The contractions, the thing that looks separate entities from Hashem, it is only in our perspective. And this is what al Rebbe continues, and he says, Kamei Shekosuv ki Hashem hu leikim v'kamei shenizbaya b'mokei mach. It is, it, is, it is written, God, he is the Lord, Hashem, who are looking. As explained elsewhere, what does it mean? The word Hashem, God, is the four letters, Yud, the Hey, the Vav, and the Hey. Now this, the, you, the, the word of Hashem represents the godliness, the way is infinite, the way is unlimited, it is above nature, above limitations. The word Elohim is the, the Lord, Hashem, the, the name, the, another name that is referred to God is Elohim, and that represents God the way he is enclosed in the nature. In fact, the word, the name Elohim has a similar numerical value as the word Hateva, which means the nature. So the nature is God in this in disguise, the concealment. Then it is Elohim is a concealment of God. And the point what we need to find and realize is that Hashem who Elohim, that Elohim, which is the nature, is God. It is just concealed from us. This with al concludes and it says. Therefore, in his presence, all else is absolutely, all else is of absolutely no account. Everything else. And since God is not affected by the symptom or the contraction, which make, which make it possible for created beings to feel separated from him, so he perceives all creations through. He perceives all creations brought into being by his word as being still within their source himself. There, they are in a state of absolute nullification. From his perspective, they are all still nothingness, non-entities. Non and the fact of the creation in no way detracts from his absolute unity. He is one alone after creation, just as he was before creation. There's a, a, there's a story, I think, with the Kuznitsa Magid. Before he passed away, he said his son was with him. He was a very holy man. And he, and he made a comment about his, about his body. And he said that he's not, that he's not, his body is not physical. It's not there. It's all God. So his son uh, went to, he held his hand and says, but father, I feel, I feel a physical body. With my, I feel a physical body. So he tells him, yes, that is because you touch it with a physical body. When you touch it with a physical body, you, 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 see a, you feel a physical body. But obviously he was at a higher level who was able to perceive things the way it is from God's perspective. That is godliness. So the question, what does it have to do with us? All of this high talk about godliness, the world is nothing, but we see a world, we see everything, we see everything physical, we touch with physical hands. 
And the answer is that the job is that we need to search. We need to look and we need to understand as much as humanly possible. It says, You should know that God is one. And this is what we're doing here, knowing. We have to search, we have to look for Hashem. So it was uh, the Magid of Mezrich, his son, Rabbi Roma Malach. When he was a little boy, he was once playing hide and seek with his friends. And he was apparently very good in hiding. He hid in a very good place, and his friends stopped looking for him. They were looking, looking, they couldn't find him, and they gave up. So he came to his father crying. He says, Father, my friend, he says, why are you crying? He says, my friends are not looking for me anymore. I was hiding from them, and they're not looking for me. Oh, says the Mezuchamagid, this father says, oh, yeah, you can understand exactly what you feel. This is exactly what Hashem says. My kinderlach are not looking for me. I want him to look for me. And that is our job. Our job is to continue to search, to continue to look, and we'll find. How much we'll find? Doesn't matter. Whatever you find. But we continue to look and search for Hashem. And that affects our connection with Hashem, our Ahava and Yira, the love and fear of Hashem. Don't underestimate any little thing what you do. So this is the end of today's Shia Mert Hashem. We'll continue tomorrow. It's the end of chapter 21 in the Tanya. Any questions, we can take them.